A Florida man is facing federal charges accused of threatening to kill staff members at the Council on Islamic Relations right here in Michigan. As Fox News Amy Lang explains, he had run-ins with the law before. Investigators say there were several calls over the course of several days that came in here to CARE's office in Canton. <laughs> I'm gonna kill your I'm gonna kill your It was really scary. He was laughing maniacally, like it's something right out of a horror movie, quite frankly. It was early December when the phone calls started. Why are you in my country, mother Go back to Palestine. You're an animal. You're an animal. You're violent. You're a killer. You're a rapist. I'm gonna kill you, mother he left, I think, a total of five voicemail messages, all of the same, go back to Palestine, why are you in my country, I'm going to kill you, a lot of cursing. It was, it was actually terrifying. Amy Ducoré is the staff attorney with CARE, the Council on American Islamic Relations. She says the frightening calls were coming from a blocked number. We had no idea who the person was, where he was calling from. We had no idea if he, he could have been around the corner, he could have been in the parking lot. They called Canton police who stepped up patrols and contacted the FBI. There was uh, about three weeks where nobody was working from the office because we just were uncertain as to what was going to happen. But now they know who was behind the hateful phone calls, 72-year-old Michael Shapiro from West Palm Beach, Florida, is facing federal charges for threatening to kill Muslims here in Metro Detroit. Luckily for us, no violence was perpetrated against us, but there was threats of violence that echoed language that was coming out of, you know, Israeli propaganda calling Muslims animals. Shapiro could face 10 years in prison for each count. The staff at CARE, just grateful investigators, are taking the situation so seriously. It really does send a message that, you know, hate in the United States will not be tolerated if you you know pick up a phone and, and you call call people with hateful messages and, and threats of death and violence you're going to face real life consequences for that in dearborn amy lang fox 2 news so amy ducare understands very well the effects that anonymous death threats made over the phone can have that is if it's happening to her however if muslims start terrorizing people over the phone or on social media CARE will support that behavior. Here are four times CARE, including Amy Ducare, sided with a rabble against a man and or his family on TV. When CARE found that Toms River, New Jersey Board of Education member Dan Leonard was mocking and scoffing at Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar on Facebook, it demanded he resign. This kind of mockery uh, that was exhibited uh, is very intimidating and you know, not indicative of the kind of nurturing environment we want our children to grow up in. Suze is talking about these. Facebook posts, he says, are racist and anti-Muslim, posted by Dan Leonard, a Toms River Board of Education member. The posts depict two Muslim Congresswomen, Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib. One says, quote, terrorist 100%. The other is a repost of an article about Tlaib's potential hunger strike that says, quote, my life would be complete if she slash they die. But Sue says it's the third post that is deeply problematic. And he's not apologizing. He's not even, you know, insinuating that uh, there's something wrong about it. Um, so, uh, you know, this, the, the Board of Education needs to ask for his resignation. When he did not move fast enough, it unleashed a torrent of vile phone calls to Dan Leonard's place of employment. Dan Leonard's social media also received many threats, including threats of physical violence directed to his underage daughter. Care never said anything to calm down the situation it created. Uh, could you just tell me what do you want? Who, just, just please try and tell me what you want. <coughs> Michael! I'm An elementary school teacher receives threatening phone calls at home and at work after an Instagram rumor claimed that she had mishandled the hijab of one of her students. Tamar Herman was under police protection while CARE got on TV several times to call for her termination. Now at 5.30, tensions and controversy at an elementary school in Essex County. A second grade girl who is Muslim wore her hijab to class every day. She was told by the teacher to take it off. But when the girl didn't take it off, the teacher ripped it off her head right in front of the class. The reaction, you can just imagine. Why do we have to imagine? Isn't this a news broadcast? 
And isn't the overreaction the real story here? Out of a family's outrage over what they say happened to their daughter in school. A teacher in New Jersey accused of pulling off the hijab off the head of a seven-year-old Muslim girl. All the newscasts missed this story. An elementary school teacher is receiving threats. She's under police protection because of rumors about a hijab. The New Jersey chapter of the Council on American Islamic Relations comparing the alleged incident to harassment and assault. The hijab is, you know, is much like any other article of clothing for a Muslim woman. To remove that publicly uh, can be very humiliating. Anyone that thinks it's okay uh, to do this to a student uh, clearly is not fit to be a teacher. Apparently, Kerr thought the phone threats were a righteous act and never even mentioned them at all. What is it? What's the matter? Oh, I heard her. Who? She was there. She huh? was there on the phone. Sales, she didn't say anything. Sales, I could hear her breathing. Sales. The manager at Michael's restaurant sent a Muslim employee home for refusing to remove her hijab. Although the restaurant fired the manager for sending the employee home, the restaurant received death threats over the phone all day long. Care got on TV to side with the rabble and eventually to compel the restaurant staff to take sensitivity training. That's right, Dawn, and we will see if that's enough. We're here at Michael's Restaurant for that peaceful protest that's about to take place in just about a half hour. Now, this all stems from a young woman being told that she had to remove her head covering or hijab, and when she refused, she was told she had to go home. The young woman's aunt says her niece was so upset and crying because it's also Ramadan, so her head covering holds even more meaning to the teenager. Now, the Council on American Islamic Relations also known as CARE, is calling for an investigation and in a statement, CARE attorney Timothy Welbeck called what happened unlawful religious discrimination, which is more disturbing during this sacred time of the year. Now, I talked to the owner's mother. She's inside. She said she's been taking calls all day. She says the, the restaurant has been getting hundreds of death threats. She was crying. She said that she feels terrible. She wants to apologize and that the owner wants to apologize. She says this is not indicative of any of the values of anybody who works here. Uh, the manager, again, has been fired. But again, we will see if this is enough for the protesters who are just starting to turn out. Uh, again, the protest is about to start at 7 o'clock. We're live in Glenside, Ellen Kaloje, Fox 29. The owner of an orchard wanted a customer to pay for the fruit that he'd picked. The orchard owner began getting death threats. Every Muslim that comes in here steals from you. Every Muslim that comes in here steals from you. That's right. Yeah. So that's and, why and, you're and acting that, like this. And that's why you're going to pay. A customer posted their conversation to social media with a request for support. Care was on two separate broadcasts, including one that featured Amy Ducare siding with the mob and never acknowledging the death threats. Steve Elzinga says he's now receiving death threats after making seemingly racist comments this past Sunday towards a Muslim customer and his family. We had three different people doing that, and I became very frustrated, and I said a few things that I'm really sorry. It's not me. They had their their vehicle and their, their belongings forcibly searched by somebody who has no authority to, to, to conduct that search. They were prohibited from leaving. It was really scary. He was laughing maniacally, like it's something right out of a horror movie, quite frankly. It was actually terrifying. We had no idea who the person was, where he was calling from. We had no idea if he, he could have been around the corner, he could have been in the parking lot. Well, sometimes the calls are coming from